How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with the one and only Jim Valley, and Sunday, 6 p.m. East. That was for Lance Storm with me. I'm here for the next hour talking everything that's happening in professional wrestling, and a lot is happening in professional wrestling. I love the fact that a lot is happening in professional wrestling, and I think all, all you guys I love the fact that a lot is happening in professional wrestling because it is, uh, there's, I, I cannot remember a week in the last, I don't know, two years where I have had nothing to talk about. And today we have Halloween Havoc. You know, to me, it was a show with two matches, really, that I, that I enjoyed. That ladder match was really good. The casket match was okay. Weird, uh, weird new rules to casket match, matches, right? The lid is broken. It doesn't count. Uh, and the main event, obviously, was a very, very good main event. We're going to talk about that. Carl Anderson. What is happening with New Japan and Carl Anderson? He's a title holder there, but it doesn't seem like he's going. Or maybe he is. Maybe it's all at work. They uh, they did a... Carl Anderson and Gallows put out a video saying he was double booked, and they didn't confirm the booking with Gallows, and he's not showing up to defend the title, so we'll see what happens there. MJF and Regal's promo... On fire on Wednesday, a lot to break down there. Matt Ryan's going to be joining me to talk about this because he's someone that that's worked with MJF in the past, and so have I. Actually, I called one of his matches early on in his career, and it, it, unbelievable. It, he's one of those people that you saw him wrestle at 23 years old or whatever he was at that time. You said, "Oh yeah, this guy's going to be a big star." Like no question about it. No question. The first time I saw that guy wrestle, same thing with Matt Riddle. You know, I kind of had the same feeling when I saw Matt Riddle wrestle for the first time. And I said, wow, this guy's going to be a big star. And he is. So a lot to talk about. Also, the injury to Adam Hangman Page. Very scary few minutes at the end of Dynamite there. Page went down. Concussed. He's okay, though. That's the big story here. But they did a great job at fixing the ending. All this and a whole lot more to talk about. Obviously, WWE and everything else going on in professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Andrew Zarian joined by Matt Ryan, Catalyst Wrestling. Hello. I got your I got your TV title behind me. You do. You do have the Sapphire Television title right behind you, which will be in action on Sunday, November 6th there at a go. 4 p.m. bell time at Strong Road Brewing in Red Hook, Brooklyn, New York, as O'Shea Edwards defends against Akira the Death Samurai and NYU standout Ray Jazz. Also on the card, Alex Shelley will be taking on Darius Carter for the Catalyst Wrestling Championship. The Infinite TIM takes on Jack Evans, the first round of the Catalyst Women's Championship Tournament, and so much more. You can get tickets right now at CatalystWrestling.com. And also, love the hoodie, Andrew. You got it out of your system? Yeah. Are we done? Uh, no, for the day? no, I didn't. But I'll okay. be stealthy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, at least uh, I don't have Baba to hear it again. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the hoodie. Everybody wants to know where I got this Gabagool hoodie. I have. Yes, I have no I idea. Well. I have no idea where I got it. Uh, I can't even find it because I've tried to find it for other people, and I have no idea where you could order this. A limited edition now. A lot to talk about here today. Um, where do you want to begin? Obviously, I, I do want to say uh, very terrible uh, news about the passing of Kevin Nash's son, Tristan, yeah. 26 years old. Terrible. I, 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 it's actually, you know, sometimes you hear these stories and, and your, your heart sinks. You know, as a father, you, you, like, really, I read this, I'm like, my God, that's so sad. Terrible, terrible. So my thoughts are with, uh, obviously, the entire family there. And I believe Same it was here. on Scott Hall's birthday, right? Or yeah, it was. Okay. It, it was announced It was announced at least on Scott Hall's birthday. Sean Ross Sapp was the one, I believe, who broke the news. Uh, shout out to Sean Oliver, by the way, from Kayfabe Commentary. He's doing a great job with Kevin Nash's podcast. I was a big fan of the Kayfabe yeah, me Commentary too. shows. Uh, and Tristan seemed to be working with Kevin on the podcast uh, as a producer, and that, you know, seeing them actually build a relationship off of that. We know that there were some things in the past where they had disagreements, but they seem to be on great terms. And anytime, uh, you know, a parent outlives a child, it's a tragedy. So hopefully, hopefully we can give them our best and hopefully they'll be able to recover from this horrible, horrible. Yeah, event. terrible, terrible. Uh, again, our thoughts are with them. Uh, terrible to hear. Oh, always. So, uh, you know. Busy week in pro wrestling. 
the hangman when page. is it not anymore i know i i say it and it's almost become like a crutch for me because i i, I i'm like am i saying it too much i'm like no but it it, it has been really uh, i mean since i started the show since i took the sunday show over uh, it's been non-stop, and obviously more news this week. Uh, I guess we'll start off. Mm-hmm. I, I want to touch on, we're going to talk about Halloween Havoc and, and the matches there. Uh, we'll go into it in the next segment, because it really was a story of two two matches, but we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about the Hangman Page situation. At the end of Dynamite, we had about 10 minutes left or 7 minutes left, Hangman took a really mean King Kong Lariat from John Moxley and it knocked him out. So was it the hit that knocked him out, Matt, or was it the fall it, on it the mat? It could have been any number of things. It looked like to me, and I am in no way an expert on concussions or what you can do for things like that. I'm just someone who's worked in the wrestling business for a little while. Uh, looked like he landed kind of crumpled on his head and neck, if I'm recalling it correctly, because he got him with the lariat, like right in the chest, maybe a little high towards the neck, but it might've just been the impact going into that flip bump, which always scare me. Flip bumps always scare me. Yeah. And he just landed in an awkward spot. The way the spot of the ring where they did it wasn't dead center of the ring. So he didn't have a lot of room on the bump. But uh, I've been at ringside when people have gotten hurt uh, when I was managing. Uh, That was uh, something that will never leave my mind. And I was a producer when a wrestler for me at Catalyst Wrestling got hit with the wrong part of the chair. You know, when you swing a chair, yeah, it's yeah, supposed to be the flat side you sit yeah. on. It was swung the opposite way, and it caught one of our guys in the back of the head and turned and split hit the back of his head open. I like saw a the shade. clip of that. I saw the clip yeah. of that. Uh, it, it was That was a nasty, uh, nasty hit. But, you know, I got to say, uh, I got to commend AW medical staff. Uh, King in our chat room brought it up and it reminded me. They were very quick. Uh, the referee, kudos to him yeah. for recognizing what had happened. Uh, the medical staff by the ring, kudos to them for being able to determine what's going on. And unbelievable job by John Moxley and everybody else that that had to figure out what do you do with the last seven minutes of this. So obviously, it seems like the plan would have been for MJF to come out at the end to do this. Uh, but you know that that's where they went. MJF came out, challenged for the title at full gear. Now you have this. Big time main event. You know, this is MJF's chance. Is it the moment, though, to put the title on him? We're going to find out. What do you think? You think it's the moment to put the title on MJF? I feel like AEW is in a win-win-but-lose situation. Explain to John me. Moxley, John Moxley is the top guy. He has proven it since day one, show one, that he is one of the cornerstones of this company. And he has been the guy that has been called on time and time again. He's been the closer. He's like Mariano Rivera in the late 90s for AEW because he's delivered in the clutch and he's been there when they've needed him most. For me, I think putting the title on MJF is the smart move, but they need to figure out who's going to feud with MJF from here. Yeah, because very if they much can so. figure that out, because if they figure that out, we're, we're off to the races and they have the next year. Is it Hangman? Is it Moxley? Do you have any of that play in all the stuff that's rumored about punk and a buyout, you know, makes it, this is either something that has turned into the best possible scenario. Cause I think max winning at full gear was the plan from the beginning of the year. Well, I I hope so because, because here's the thing, you know, they've, they've done a, I, I, I will, I I can't criticize the build for MJF because I, I think that it's worked. Whatever they've done with him has worked so far. You, people have yeah. not gotten tired w- from him. Uh, he's gotten better. I mean, he was great overall when he first came in and he started. I, listen, but I, I think you and I have very different exposure to to Max because we've seen mm-hmm. him locally in the Northeast for a number of years. So for us, it was a a very, I mean, quick evolution into a main television act for him. And yeah. he's done unbelievable. But now you put the title on him. Who do you have as a babyface to chase him? I, I, it unless could be you go Wardlow, do you run that back to. so soon? I don't know if you'd run that back so soon. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. 
there, but, there's you know, a maybe lot this is of... an opportunity for other guys. The mid card, you know, I, who I, though? Should... Like you can't follow up Max coming back and calling a shot, getting the win. Is it? It could be Danielson. It could be Yuta. It could be Claudio. It could. I I would continue it with the Blackpool Combat Club because of the chemistry between Regal and MJF in that oh, promo. Uh, that Wednesday. yeah, which that promo. We'll, we'll I want to touch on a little bit. Yeah. Unbelievable job by both of them. Uh, you could tell the inspiration for for MJF in that promo, right? It was Flair esque. He was fired up. He was doing the, the the head thing. He was doing the, you know, do you know who I am? He did that whole thing. I'm MJ, MJF. I thought it was a great promo. I, I think Regal amplified it. And I think at the ending, I I mean, he's a baby face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was a, he was a baby face. That entire promo, he was a baby face. The end, the la- the, the final segment, he was a baby face. So it's, do you do you turn this around this week? No. It's it's Austin in ninety seven. It's Austin after Survivor Series ninety six, leading up to SummerSlam ninety seven. Yeah, I hope so, man. I hope so because that I, that, that run changed also, the entire business. You know what kills a hot character? Making them do a complete one eighty in everything they do. And if they turn yeah. Max babyface It'll completely devalue what he's doing. And I'd love to explore more of this when we come back on Wrestling Observer Live and talk about some of this stuff. would love to get comments from the people listening live, whether it's on Twitter or in the YouTube live chat. Andrew, we got a lot more stuff coming up. What do we got on tap? Yes, we do. Uh, We're going to talk about Halloween Havoc after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Sunday edition with me, Adrian Matt Ryan joining me. Hello, little uh, ACDC. Vince McMahon's favorite, I was gonna bring uh, this... favorite band. Hmm, yes, it, him and Kid Rock. I, I was going to note yeah. the song that brought us in earlier, the Aerosmith song in the last segment, made me think of every WCW theme song from the mid nineteen nineties. What the uh, the the Jimmy Hart classic? No, it's it's the Jimmy Papa stuff. It's the early stuff. Oh, the Which early is weirdly, stuff. yeah. Very, weirdly, very I cool have stuff. Li- permission to use. <laughs> Let's talk about the CM Punk and AEW possible buyout happening. Uh, big Dave Meltzer, our very own Dave Meltzer and the Observer, brought up that seems like this is something that might be happening, and the non compete seems to be the hang up as to how long of a non compete. We know Punk's out for numerous amounts of months. I don't know how how much of a non-compete they want, but I mean, do you just buy his contract out? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what you do here. This is, you, you, you're, you're, it is a bad move either way. Side. No matter what yeah, you do, I, there's, it is not a good move. None no. of this was good. The outcome of this will determine 2023. And 2024, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, it, I, I, people don't realize they, they CM Punk was a pivotal. Not saying it was Warner Media's dream to have him or or Discovery's dream, but you know, to have a big star like that on your TV went a very long way. The, I can, I can say with the level of certainty that the summer of 2021 was a very happy time in regards of who came in, and you can feel the buzz, too. And there's so many things that have happened in the last 14 months since the la- the first dance that have created real bullishness on, on AEW and a real hesitancy on AEW. It's kind of like cryptocurrency right now, where the <laughs> crypto market is, where there are these true believers... And then everybody else who kind of sees things in a completely different way, which is, wow, pro wrestling, people have differing opinions and they're tribalist about it. Me, oh my, I never saw that coming. But you ha- if I'm Tony Khan and what I'm hearing about the locker room is that Punk's the least popular guy there, you may, may have to let him go for morale and give him the buyout. Okay, so here's now the question, okay? He leaves. This guy got the itch again to come back. 
It's a very, I'm, I'm going to use hand quotes here, okay? It's a very different WWE. But the guy running it is also the guy that he was at loggerheads with the most. Sure, but you know what? The enemy of my, the enemy uh, of my yeah. enemy. Yeah, you're right. So if you're Tony, and listen, I, I, I have no, I have no insight on this. And I'm going to tell you something. 99% of people over there have no insight on this. This is, yeah. this has been tight lipped because it's, a, it's a major legal matter. Also, the consequences of your decision making, no matter what it is, has a astronomical fallout from it. Whether or not the, I mean, the best case scenario for, for AEW would be you buy him out. And this guy says, I'm never wrestling again. And he doesn't wrestle. The bitterness or here. Has I, to I be saw somebody mention this. I saw somebody mention this on Twitter the other day. If ROH is going to be its own standalone thing, put Punk on ROH. Do you think I? I cannot see him wanting to be with Tony right now. I. If I'm just, I'm a positing theories. Yeah. If I understand, I get it. I get, I get what you're thinking. Right? He's away from it. the people he doesn't want to work with. He won't yeah, have. But to I don't deal think he wants to work with Tony. Then I who's he going to work with? It. He's going to go back to he's going to go back to IWA Mid South. <laughs> yeah, he's going to work not, with Ian Rotten. I, yeah. I, I'm being facetious, no, obviously, no, no, but Listen, does he go he, to Japan? No, there's so many. There's, there's one. There's one place. <sighs> Catalyst there's Wrestling. One place. Catalyst Wrestling. Yeah, you can pay him. You can buy out that contract. No, <laughs> I, gotta, I may have to go WWE. to the bank. Yeah, it's yeah. WWE. If he is going to wrestle, it it is WWE. And you know what? I would have said this will never happen. Until this happened, and it's wrestling, and we all know it's wrestling. Yeah, and, and what people, if people, you know, they they will they will say they will never wrestle, they will never do this, they will never do that, but they at the end of the day, the money talks, and it's a money business, and these yeah. and, and a lot of the talent, especially talent that came up in CM Punk's era, see, they were told C, CM Punk, Claudio, uh, Danielson. All these guys, they were not the picked guys to run the business. They weren't set to be the future of the industry, but they happened to become the future, especially CM Punk. You know, 2002, 2003, I remember reading, you know, on the WrestleZone forums and, and the uh, just online, just reading how great this guy is and how he's the future of wrestling. And, you know, he did end up becoming the future of wrestling for a number of years. He did end up becoming the number one guy, but... Do, do you want to give up that possibility to make all that money now with WWE, you know, playing this this battle of optics and perception against AEW? If, if that promo, he comes out, shakes hands with with Hunter, and and he I'm, buries at WWE, AEW. Yeah. yeah, the WWE would jump on that in a freaking heartbeat. And also, if I'm Comcast or Fox, and I see this massive opportunity. And I'm the WWE, and I'm realizing right now my deals are up in just about 24 months. Yep. I can play both of these sides to get Punk, not have to pay him, because you're going to have to pay him a lot. And there's a lot of advantages there. And if I'm NBC Universal right now, and I have so much invested in the WWE with not only the deal with USA, but also Peacock and how that's the most, you know, the USA network used to be the number one network in cable. And now it's stuck in the middle and it's had a precipitous drop over the last few years because of basically they've pivoted programming. Yeah. And the, you know, NBCSN dying, a lot of that programming went over there. So USA is in a weird space when it comes to what's on the air there and the philosophy. So the WWE is the biggest thing they have and the only thing that really can cover them to get a bigger rating. So I'm looking at that and I'm like, I will give him a ton of money. I will give him a development deal with Peacock to bring him over and have him wrestle. Well, Fox because, wanted him. You remember, Fox yeah, wanted him. Uh, yeah, WWE he was on backstage. He, he was, but initially they wanted him. For WWE, they wanted WWE to bring him back, and I think I think Dave mentioned this on the last episode of Observer Radio. I think there was some nonsense that WWE nonchalant was like, "Oh yeah, he wants too much money; we can't afford him." Yeah, I could I can definitely see that happening because 
WWE is content and all the, and we keep hearing rumors and you and I keep having these conversations of like, are they going to sell? When are they going to sell? These things look like they're going to sell. And that's, you know, been water cooler content for the WWE for, I would say since the Peacock deal, maybe even since the Fox deal. Listen, also, I, uh, it really depends on how, you know, what Nick Khan is thinking as well. We know about Triple H and the history he has, but, you know, we don't know the, the history between or, or the relationship between Nick Khan and CM Punk. Uh, we don't know how, you know, I, j- just I'm going back to that to that scrum and him saying that I'm, I work with children. And, and he really, the story from this, you know, months later is... He pretty much buried the company said this company is extremely immature and nobody knows how to handle themselves. Uh, I mean, he shows up on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. He cuts the same exact promo. He's a baby face. Yeah, it's so it's so weird. It is so weird to me. This the whole perception of it, all this stuff. Yeah, it, listen, and, and I hope maybe, you know, there's still what it could still work out, right? There's always a possibility you work it out and you, and you say, the best case scenario, everybody everybody just realizes how absurd all of this was. Yeah. And they learn from it and they move on. But it's professional wrestling and the, nobody learns the from their The wrestling mistakes. promoter in my head is just yelling, make money off I of know, this. I know. They could sell. If they did Punk Omega, they could sell out a stadium. Of course they could. Straight up. They could they sell could. out no, a stadium. percent they would. I, I'm, I, I, I've always been very careful by saying that AEW could sell out a stadium. Uh... I, if that's your main match with the story that 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 you know what happened with reality, sure. But is it going to happen? I don't know. It, it, can you can is CM Punk going to go back there? I don't think so. Does CM Punk want to go back? Who knows? Just a very unfortunate situation for everybody, everybody involved. Very unfortunate. I yeah. You know, everybody likes to pick a side and they like to talk about this. And you want you want to pick Henny's side or the Bucks or whatever. It, there's nobody. Nobody won. Everybody lost here. And and you know who lost the most? Tony Khan. Tony yeah. lost the most. So if these guys respect Tony the way that they've said they respect him and they are so thankful and uh, CM Punk was crying during the media scrum when, when Tony announced that he bought the Ring of Honor library and Punk is saying how happy he is that it's in the right hands. His legacy is in the right hands. If that's how you think about this guy, you would not have done what you did. I, you know, and I'm not an apologist for Tony. You know, I'm not. A, I, I really, I, I, I don't know. CM Punk was not right in this. Sometimes, uh, and, and the Bucks weren't right, and you know, none of nobody was correct. Everybody, this was a this total was, disaster. Sometimes you hate someone more so much that your love for other people kind of gets lost in the shadows. That's probably what happened here. And I'm not capping or caping for anybody. This is a horrible situation, but there's not going to be a clean solution from this. It's going to be ugly, and it's going to be one of those things that we keep talking about for the end of time. Absolutely. Wrestling Observer Live, going to a quick break here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here. Matt Ryan joining me. That's right. Sultans of Swing on Sunday. Yeah. I had to drive from Jersey to make the show today. Oh, my. I'm sorry. I was at Peppercorns in Park Ridge. Ooh. It, Peppercorns it, just sounds fancy. It does. It's, an, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's a nice all-American New York, like a like an all-American restaurant, right? Like a family restaurant. But mm-hmm. do you know who, who used to hang out there at the bar regularly? Uh, um, hmm. Let me think here. One of my Dominic favorite. Dominic the, the, my, one of my I'll give you a hint. One of my favorite Futurama characters. Um, Bender Bending Rodriguez. No, the head of Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, ah, you say. Baru, Baru, Baru Henry. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, I, I, that is my favorite Nixon, and the only time that Spiro Agnew has been turned into a cartoon. <laughs> I a regular, would, I would regular character much, on a show. Fantastic. I would so. very much like to hear f- great promos done <laughs> in Richard Nixon's voice. That would make me so happy. <laughs> I would, I, you know what? Don't ask. Don't say it too many times because it might happen. <laughs> Halloween Havoc last night. The tale of two matches, I would say, for this show. This was a PLE. This was not on USA. So we're back to this being a specialty event. Matt, why don't you uh, break this down really quickly with me? 
because I know, uh, yeah. you know, th this was interesting. Uh, I, I got to say, for me, the ladder match, the opening ladder match was fun, and the main event was very good. Yeah, I, I liked the opening match. It felt like they shot the moon on a couple of spots, and much like when Van Wagner threw Wesley on, threw onto the table, he yeeted a man in front of God and everybody. Uh, that was great, but a few spots where I believe it was or Oro Mensa, he went for a, a leap out to the outside, and he landed almost on the apron. These guys were moving very fast. They were trying to get a lot of things done, a lot of moving parts. The first multi-man ladder match in modern NXT, uh, you know, in modern NXT history, NXT 2.5 or whatever we're calling it now, and I think Carmelo Hayes is one of three people on this card who needs to be up on the main roster. And I'll talk about why, as we go through the card, why I think certain people should be up there, but really can't be up there yet, which is, you know, a big problem in the WWE right now. But awesome for Wes Lee to win the strap. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I enjoyed, uh, I thought it was, listen, not the best ladder match, but a fun ladder match. Yeah. Fun ladder match. Final match was NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose with Toxic Attraction versus Alba Fire. There was a pre-match segment. They met in a haunted house. Uh, weird. Was it a match? Yeah. It was a it was a segment that turned into a match, and I I really like Gigi Dolan here. Yeah, she she had fun She's with come it around big time. Yeah, and she's also into horror and all this other Michigas, so it was just someone basically playing their dream role, and it was really good television. Uh, there were some parts of it that were a little too ha-ha and gaga, um, you know, clinical terms, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yes. the hands coming out of stuff, very Monsters-y, very, it was Scooby-Doo. It was Scooby-Doo, but the heels were trying to find the baby face and not the other way around. Um, for what it was, it was good. Um... It, it had to go with the theme because I think they've done this with Halloween Havoc in the past. I think they did that with the Halloween Havoc in 2020. So this is them trying to dust off that stuff. Probably a Jeremy Borash special, and Borash is one of the best in the world at doing things like Listen, that. Does not get enough credit, Jeremy Borash. Not at all. Right? Does yeah. not get enough if, credit. If he, he's been very instrumental in WWE. I mean, they, they've... Yeah. His ideas and his, and his production... Uh, have not fallen on you know uh, just uh, people recognize how important yeah he is. i think i think if it's not michael cole it should be him taking the kevin dunn spot when that time comes to be interesting honest interesting i don't know i don't know if that's he that's what he does i think you know kevin dunn is an interesting conversation to have because i don't think they, they he has a very unique position and I don't think anybody that will eventually get that spot will have the power that kevin dunn has the only person it could be is a is Borash or someone who's been with Triple H since the very beginning because there's that inexplicable connection between McMahon and Kevin Dunn going back to when Kevin Dunn's father worked for Vince yeah. McMahon, you know, the, Vince's father, and something involving TV tapes and saving them from a burning car. That's been kind of like the urban legend these that past is the urban three legend. Imagine years. Imagine that never happened. There was never a burning. Uh, there was never a burning uh, building, and there was never him rescuing the tapes. It would be so... I was thinking about those butterfly effects things earlier today regarding well, wrestling stuff and wrestling. Wrestling has tons of that, right? Like, yeah, I'll give you, I'll the, give you every, my ultimate. Every I will give you yeah. my ultimate one, okay? Very simple one. This is so easy. If Montreal never happened. Yeah, if that's Bret the Hart, big, If Bret Hart never left. I think a lot of what plays out plays out. I think it's Austin and Bret at Mania. Instead of Austin and Sean at me. And that, I think Sean and, and you would have gotten a way better match, but you don't have Tyson. Yeah. No Tyson. No, I think Tyson still happens. Mm -mm, Tyson definitely so. still happens. I don't think so. No, because they're still in the economic situation they're in and they needed this to be a home run. I think you can integrate Tyson in another way involving that match. You can have him say, I love watching Bret Hart as a kid. We came up at the same time. We knew each other. Austin's a punk. He doesn't stand for the same you know, there's a lot of different yeah. ways they could have gone with it. They could have gone. Yeah, I, you know, very, but that's my favorite butterfly effect. Yeah. Bret Hart never leaving, what happens? Or Sean never hurting his back. Yeah. Uh, you there's, know, th there's that's if, another one. What if 
There's what if Vince doesn't uh, sell the Georgia Championship wrestling time slot? What if he got along with Ted Turner? What would that have looked like? That could have meant WCW went down a completely different path. Oh, like, there was never so a WCW. There was yeah, there would have not. Yeah. Yeah, it would have remained a, Crockett, and someone would have bought it, not them. Yeah, very interesting weird. stuff here. Uh, Apollo Crews defeated Grayson Waller in the casket match. Wa Grayson Waller? 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 Waller. Waller. Uh, Waller, sorry. Uh, he went through the casket, broke you know, broke through the casket, and uh, interesting finish here. Yeah, that was very much the Air Bud rule. There's yes. no rule that you can. Yeah, you got yeah. can't put him through the casket. You got to put him in the casket. So you got yeah. a brand new casket. You got a brand new casket. So and that 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 was a story there. All right, it was what it was. Did not hate it. I did not hate this match. I did not love. No, it, it was. A, I, I it was like fine. Apollo Cruz. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of. He's one of those pe talent that could be up or down in NXT. That really, if you move them up, what are they going to do? Yeah. That's, uh, my, Rox, that's my question with a lot of these guys. Roxanne Perez, Cora Jade, Weapons yep. Wild match, 13 minutes. Uh, whatever. I did not care for this. I, I thought it was a pretty good match. I, I feel like they they pushed Roxanne Perez to go a little bit out of her comfort zone using a lot of gimmicks in the match. I like the skateboard spot to the outside. That was cool. Okay. Uh, I like yeah. that. One. Julius Creed defeated Damien... Damien Damon Kemp. Dame, Dame, Damon, you know, I, I have I have Game of Thrones Damon on Kemp. my mind. Yeah. Because today's the season finale. Dothraki Kemp. Dothraki. And I wanted to say Damon, as in as in the character from Game of Thrones. Damon Kemp in an ambulance match. I despise Nerd. ambulance matches. Have I have I ever told you this? No. Hate ambulance matches. Hate that gimmick. It's fair. No idea why. Just, you don't, don't like ambulances. Like Just don't like it. Uh, Mandy Rose defeated Alba Fire. We spoke about that. And the main event here, which was a fantastic main event. I I really liked I liked Ilya Drag Dragunov in this match. He was okay. really, really good. You know, the big story here was Braun Breaker really stood out as far as how complete of an act he is, right? Also, first time in 22 years, you brought this up. Before we went on the air, a Steiner is headlining, technically headlining a Halloween Havoc pay per view. Think, I want people to think about that. Wrestling comes full circle. At the end of the day, <laughs> you have a Steiner in the main event of Halloween Havoc in 2022. Very cool. Is that not? Very, very cool. It, That's like, very cool. Listen, yeah. They got to change this guy's name. I, I am so sorry. Braun Steiner is just I, money waiting to be made. Oh, my God, it's money, especially when he comes to the main roster and he comes in with the singlet and he's doing that whole thing. I, I, I don't understand the mentality of hiding the fact that he's a Steiner. Okay, fine, we know Scotty and WWE were not on great terms, but at the end of the day, you have an unbelievable name attached to this guy. I mean, it's the same thing as Joe Henning, right? Yeah. You got Mr. Oh, Perfect, yeah. Kurt Henning's one of the most beloved wrestlers from that 80s boom period, early, late 80s boom, early 90s, and you don't use his name. You have Braun Breaker, the son of, Scott, using... uh, the son of Rick Steiner, the nephew of, of, of Scott Steiner, and you're not using his name? And they're using all the other accoutrements. His intro starts with the siren. I know. You might as well give him a chain link hat and a tiger. At this point. I know. It, you know what? Ridiculous. He will come out like that. He will come out like that. I do like, I though, he's more like Scotty than, like, the, the yeah. character's more Scotty than it is his dad, which is cool. It, it's like if they did this, if they did the fusion dance. It is if the Steiners yes. did the fusion dance. He does that Steiner yell? Yeah. I'm also glad that enhancement matches don't exist on NXT because I feel like if Braun Breaker got, it went full Uncle Scotty, on an enhancement guy, we would be seeing the ouch files come back. <laughs> you know what I want to see? His workout video. The Braun Breaker at home DVD workout video. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Did you not? Have you seen the Scott Steiner one? No, I have oh, not, but dude, I need you gotta to find see it. it. You know what? Right after the show, go and Google <laughs> okay. this, okay? I He's will. bench pressing women. 
Like he's doing, that's, he's doing like babe wrestling. workouts. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. He's like, and he's screaming. He's like, you want to work out with babes? This is how you do it. And he's like lifting them like, like nothing. I just, I love professional wrestling so much for things <laughs> so like that. Insane. It's so insane. Uh, but Scott, uh, I was going to say Scott Steiner won the match. Braun Breaker defeated, uh, won the match. A very good story here. Uh, definitely check it out if you have not seen it. Shawn Michaels in the in the scrum, the post Halloween Havoc scrum. The plan is to set uh, to start running PLEs outside of Orlando in 2023. We, I spoke about this about six months ago, and people told me I was nuts and my information was wrong. I was told not that the takeover name when when they stopped the takeover name, the mm-hmm. moment it happened. I said, hey, what, what's going on with the takeover names? Because they, they ran a show. It wasn't a takeover. It was just a whatever named pay-per-view. I was told it's not that the takeover names are gone. They will eventually come back. And at that point, hmm. I think it was somebody, you know, maybe someone alluding to me that, that you know, maybe Hunter's coming in power and this will happen and a lot of changes are happening in NXT. I took it as, well, maybe it's on the back burner until they're ready. You know what? They are going to be running out of the the performance center, which is a very big positive here. They will start with bigger shows first and then add more later. Very cool stuff. I, I think that's a big thing. And also, uh, Dominic Dijakovic returning. Yay! To NXT, good move. You need to rehab yeah. this dude for yeah, sure. They, they they fumbled the bag with him hard with retribution. Yeah. They fumbled that whole angle, but. It's great to see him back in action. And, and also, I like just more WCW things existing in the world. Yeah, I kind of like that. And, you know, Chucky. Chucky's in the WWE universe now, which is fantastic. Yeah. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Final few moments of the show with my tag That's right, partner. Baby. That's right, baby. With my tag partner, Matt Ryan, hanging out here. You know, we were talking about before we, we were talking about, you know, the, the butterfly effect in professional wrestling. And I'd love to do this with you next week. Maybe we could take some Ooh. time on the show next week and, and kind of deep dive in the final segment into what I love the what ifs. Yeah. What if this happened? And, you know, it's I, I prefer the what ifs more than like fantasy booking outcomes mm-hmm. because anybody could do that. Right. But like to be like, OK, give me a what if. Right. What if Kane never happened? What would have the what would the Undertaker have done? Or you know, what if they gave up on the Undertaker? You know, the, there's so many of these little moments. Uh, the two man power trip, Hunter never getting hurt. The the invasion follows that immediately. There's so many things exactly. with that. Different things with the actual invasion itself. What if WCW never goes out of business? Uh, I want to shout out what between if- the sheets for doing a great Patreon about the sale of WCW. By the way, great listen. Yeah, uh, you know, WCW, well, that's a big one, right? What if Eric yeah. was able to get it with Fusion Media? That day, I will never forget, I was listening to the Wrestling Observer. That that final day, so whatever that Tuesday morning was from the, the last day of WCW, you know? Or I, I the two, there are two key moments, Wrestling Observer. Actually, Tom Zink's calls, I remember all of them. Oh, yeah. Right? They were Shout classic. out to Iata. Great. The, the EI, that, that show was great. Uh, but there are two moments. One was Eric purchasing, you know, the Fusion deal being announced. Two, it falling apart. And three, Vince McMahon mm-hmm. buying. Those three shows in 2001, I, I remember everything about it. So and It really so created, you know, my, my thing with pro wrestling. Guys, we're going to be back next week. Join us on Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition with Matt Ryan and myself. We'll see you all next time, guys. Take care. Bye.